This is a revision video for the 24 mark question Outline and evaluate one or more theories of the maintenance of romantic relationships. Each slide that you see will represent a different paragraph of the essay and if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint that accompanies this video then please tweet me at blonde underscore pretzel and request one. This video is also links to another video I've made which is a memory story so that you can easily recall all 12 paragraphs and the description, sorry, the, um, the link for that is in the description of this video. Social exchange theory claims that in relationships partners will have an expectation of profit, i.e. that the rewards gained from the relationship will be greater than the costs. Commitment to a relationship is dependent on its profitability. For a relationship to succeed, its costs should be minimal and should certainly be fewer than the profits. The comparison level, CL, is used as a standard to judge the quality of our existing relationships. Our CL is determined by our experiences of previous relationships and our observations of others' relationships. If the profitability of our current relationship exceeds the CL, the relationship is judged as worthwhile. The comparison level for alternatives, CLA, is how people weigh the profitability of their current relationship with that of potential future relationships. Research has demonstrated the importance of CLs in relationships. Simpson et al. 1990 found that participants in existing relationships rated people of the opposite sex as less attractive than participants not in relationships. This suggests that people judge prospects of new alternative relationships as less profitable if they are already in a committed relationship. The CLA may provide an explanation as to why many women choose to stay in abusive relationships. If investments in the relationship are high, e.g. children, financial security, and alternative prospects are bleak, e.g. poverty and homelessness, then a woman may see staying in the abusive relationship to be more profitable than leaving it. Gottman and Levinson, 1992, found that unsuccessful marriages had a negative to positive exchange rate of 1 to 1 compared to, a su compared to successful marriages of 5 to 1. So an increase in positive exchanges between couples should help maintain relationships. Integrated Behavioural Couples Therapy applied this research helping couples increase their positive exchanges and Christian Sinatel found that about two-thirds of 60 couples reported significant improvements in the quality of their relationship as a result. Social exchange theory has been criticised for being culturally biased, explaining maintenance in only Western relationships. Mogadam found that even within Western culture it may still only apply to short-term relationships among folks with high social mobility, such as students. This suggests that this theory does not represent a universal explanation of romantic relationships and thus is culture biased. Equity theory proposes that people strive to achieve fairness in their relationships. Any inequity can cause distress. Relationship satisfaction is highest when each partner feels that they give the same amount into the relationship and get the same amount of rewards from it. In equity, when people feel that they are giving a lot and getting little out of relationships or are giving little and getting a lot leads to dissatisfaction and distress. Equity does not necessarily mean that input and output in the relationship is the same for each partner but that their perceived ratio of inputs and outputs is the same. If we perceive inequality in our relationship, we are motivated to change it. For example, if we feel that we are giving more than our partner, we may decrease our input, trying to try to convince our partner to increase their own input or change our own perception of the input ratio. There is research evidence which suggests that equitable relationships are indeed the most satisfactory ones. Stafford and Canary found marital satisfaction to be lowest in people who considered themselves to be under-benefited and highest in those who felt they were in equitable relationships. This supports equity theory which proposes that equity in a relationship leads to satisfaction and thus maintenance of that relationship. A problem for equity theory is that it fails to predict whether real-life relationships will be maintained or break down. Damaris, 2007, found that among 1,500 couples in the US, the only reliable indicator of divorce was a woman's sense of being underbenefited. 
other aspects of proper of profitability or equity did not predict the likelihood of a relationship failing. Research suggests that people are more satisfied in equitable relationships than in profitable ones, but men and women tend to judge equity differently. Steele and Weltman noted that in couples where the husband earns more, both partners view the husband's work as more important. This was not reversed when the woman earned more. This tendency for women to seek less for themselves in a relationship makes equity difficult to judge. Ragsdale and Brandon Brown, 2007, also criticise equity theory by rejecting the claim that equity is a key determinant of relationship satisfaction and argue that this is an incomplete rendering of the way in which married people behave with respect to each other. So equity theory is therefore an insufficient theory to explain marital maintenance.